we all can uh, be back here together and uh, that we can uh, begin to uh, fellowship and connect with each other and uh, and all of that in uh, ways that we can't do at this present time because of the physical distancing and so forth and so on. Um, but I'm looking forward towards being able to get together with all of God's people again. I think that's a great thing and profitable for all of us. Amen. Appreciate those that are here today doing our music and uh, just being together here to be able to worship and uh, thankful for you. And uh, just uh, feels good to be able to have others in here to worship God with. And uh, so it's great to have all of you here, those that are taking care of the sound. Thank you so much and uh, for being here. Uh, it's a great thing uh, for us to be able to have these services online. Uh, technology nowadays has uh, probably brought the gospel uh, to more regions uh, over the last few years than it could have possibly done it if it was in person to each, to each and every country and so forth. But I'm thankful today that we have this technology, uh, at least to the degree that it helps us in this area. Not so thankful for the technology whenever it is a detriment to living for God or a distraction or provides opportunity for too many addictions and too many things. So I um, want to uh, preach today for a little while on something that, uh, that I believe is going to help us through this and, uh, and just help us to have, the, um, I suppose, what God wants us to have in our lives, uh, no matter what happens. And so I'm going to preach to you today on the subject of continual thanksgiving. And if you want to go with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to start reading in verse 12, uh, just because I don't want to take it out of context. And uh, Paul's letter to the church at Thessalonica um, ends up, that first letter at least to this church, ends up with a kind of a grocery list of all of the things that Paul considered to be important. And, and so it's like you putting together a list of things that you have to do, possibly before you go away on holidays, possibly before some other big thing in your life. I know ladies who have been pregnant and had babies, there's this whole grocery list of things that they have to accomplish and have to get done before that baby arrives. And uh, and so it is that that Paul gives kind of a, a a list at the very end here of First Thessalonians, and uh, it's uh, I'll just uh, go through this, and then we're going to center in on on one particular verse, and that's verse 18. So we ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord, and admonish you, and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourselves. Uh, and we urge you, brothers, admonish the idle, encourage the faint-hearted, help the weak, be patient with them all, see that no one repays anyone evil for evil, but always seek to do good to one another and to everyone. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything and hold fast to what is good. Abstain from every form of evil or every appearance of evil, I think in the King James. And now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful. He will surely do it. Brothers, pray for us. Greet all the brothers with a holy kiss. I put you under oath before the Lord to have this letter read to all the brothers. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. There's a passage of scripture in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 20. Uh, kind of is parallel to this. Goes along with this. says, giving thanks always uh, for all things. And, uh, and so I want to preach to you about continually giving thanks, uh, about having an attitude and the spirit of giving thanks always. Let's pray and ask God to be a part of this, uh, service. This message will be anointed and that, uh, most of all that God will prepare your heart, your ears, your mind for what God has to speak to you about today. Lord, we just love you so very much. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. God, we're, uh, Today, I'm just so grateful for your touch in my life. 
not sure altogether where I would be without you and don't even want to consider where that could possibly have landed me if you had not come into my life. Father, I just appreciate so much the changes that you made in my life. Lord, you made such a difference. Thank you, Lord, for uh, for the Holy Ghost. Thank you that you have uh, just washed all of my sins away, that you have cleansed me by your blood. Lord, you've uh, helped me to be able to see, Lord, that it's not about the goodness that resides in me, but it is about the goodness that is in you that is placed in me. Thank you, Lord, that you are able to change our hearts and our minds, our desires. Father, that if we will allow you to and give you permission, Jesus, that uh, you are able to change the very direction of our lives. Father, I'm just so grateful today. I pray that your anointing be upon, upon me as I preach. Lord, mostly upon your word as it goes forth. Your word is powerful. It is able to, to divide asunder. Even the Bible says the bone and the marrow. But most of all, Lord, things that should belong in our spirits and hearts that, that need to be removed. Your word is a scalpel that can remove those things. But also it can place in us, Lord, it, it can do a transplant. It can take away that old thoughts and heart and put in a new heart and, and help us to be a new creation, a new creature in you. So, Father, I thank you for that. And I pray, Lord, as I preach that you will just change each and every one of us to be uh, just be more and more formed and created in your image so that this world can may not see us, may not see the things that are wrong in us and the things that we may fail at, but they will see you in us and how you help us even in the midst of our failures and the midst of our shortcomings, that you are all in all in our lives. So, Father, anoint this message, anoint your people, anoint their hearts, minds, and spirits. Father, to receive your word today in Jesus' name. Everybody say, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know that in preaching this particular message that uh, that uh, you may think that it is redundant, that we talk about Thanksgiving a lot. Um, but can I just tell you today that, that preaching is oftentimes uh, about uh, repeating things that are of particular need in our lives. I have found out in Living for God and also in pastoring that uh, even though people may grab a hold of a sermon, a message, a scripture, and begin to apply it in their lives, that that oftentimes that this world and things that are going around them and, and maybe just day-to-day -day life have the ability to get us distracted. And, and after a while, we begin to think that... Uh, our, Pardon me, we don't even begin to think or we don't even do it intentionally. We just find that some things that should be a part of our Christian existence and our, our living for God just kind of fade off into the background and, and we become negative and we, we stop being thankful for the things that God has placed in our lives. Psalms 95 and 2 said us, says this, says, let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise unto him with songs of praise. Psalms 100 verse 4 says, enter, his, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. So much of it, if we go to the Old Testament, especially in Psalms and even in the New Testament in Paul's writings, we find that, that this idea of giving thanks and praise to God was integral to, to the existence of Israel back in the Old Testament and should be a part of our existence in the New Testament. fact is, I, I will get into this a little bit more, but I think if we don't have an attitude of thanksgiving and a spirit of, of continual thanksgiving, then, that we will begin to slide away from God. Um, as Paul uh, talks about this particular scripture in this, and exhorts us to uh, continually praise God and continually give thanks to God, no matter what the situations in our life, it seems like to us, I, I would think, at least to me, maybe not to you, that that this is beyond our ability to be able to accomplish. Uh, we may look at things, and, and uh, just by way of being honest with you, there's all kinds of things around us that happen that are extremely negative. And let me add to that, you're going to encounter a lot of people that are especially negative. There are people that are negative about just about everything that goes on. 
uh, right now. And, and of course, um, not only right now, but, but maybe COVID is just giving people an excuse to be more negative than usual. But, um, but some people just seem to have that, that in them. They're, they're negative about politics. They're negative about economies. They're, uh, it seems like they're negative about relationships and about people. Uh, become so cynical and hardened within people's hearts that uh, that it's hard to find anything when you talk to certain individuals that they're thankful for, that they appreciate uh, that's happening in their lives because they have been so um, become so part of their makeup that they they like to complain and and uh, unfortunately that particular spirit of unthankfulness can sometimes be contagious. And we even as Christians, we as children of God, sometimes we pick up on that. And so the heights to which this beckons us sometimes seems a little too rugged for our feeble feet. So much so that, that and I don't know if you've ever done this, but, but I've kind of done this in my life from time to time. I've read through scripture and, uh, and because I may find it something that, that is particularly particularly, see if I can say that word properly, uh, particularly difficult or onerous upon me, I might just, you know, kind of skim that. Do you ever read books and you just, you get to a chapter that you know is particularly pointed and, and uh, I'm not talking fiction now, but nonfiction. And, uh, oh yeah, yeah, you'll kind of skim over that part and then you'll go to the part, well, you think to yourself, well, that would really be good for so-and-so to read that. Because it's so much easier for us to find things that we want to change about other people as opposed to when we see something that God or, or possibly a book that's written that could change us and change the way that we live. But uh, And sometimes we just read things and uh, just for the sake of having more knowledge and information. That's, a, that's just so pathetic that we would do that. Because knowledge and information is absolutely useless without the application of wisdom so that we can find something in our life, <coughs> pardon me, that it will change about us. Excuse me for just a sec. <coughs> pardon me. It was, uh, it was uh, Paul's sincere belief that, uh, that this was a possible way of living. Not only was it his belief that this was a possible way of living. It was also by experience that he knew that it was possible to live this way. And so you can find, and if you read Scripture and you read through the book of Acts or, or read Paul's letters and epistles to the various churches, you're going to find numerous times when Paul was, uh, was not in the best of circumstances. You're going to find him at times naked. You're going to find him sometimes in the deep. And you're going to find him at times in in peril of his countrymen, in peril of others, in peril of just about anybody that's around him. You're going to find him stoned and left for dead. You're going to find him in prison with Silas and uh, naked and beaten and in stocks in prison. And yet it seems to be that you're never going to find him without him praising God and without him being thankful for the things that God had done in his life. Wow. What an example. I know that Paul said in one of his letters, he said, be followers of me as I'm a follower of Christ. You would have to think that this whole idea of thankfulness and his ability to be thankful, no matter what he was experiencing, no matter if he had a lot or had little, no matter what the uh, circumstances of his life were, it seems like he was always able to find a way and uh, to begin to thank God for the things that were were in his life that God had blessed him with. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that happens to our life is going to be positive, as we may have noticed by Paul's life. It also, uh, this passage of Scripture, you're going to notice uh, as you read through it, this is not just advice. It's not just option in your life or my life. It's not something we can put off to the side. It's not an option like, you know, special wheels or bigger tires or, or a different trim package on your vehicle. This isn't an option. Paul says this. He said, be thankful in all things. And, and he, it's, he said this inspired by the Holy Ghost. 
The New Testament, Paul wrote down in his epistles to the various churches, he's very clear whenever it's his opinion or his thoughts. And he will say this, I say this not by command, but by permission. In other words, when he talks about things that are that were not inspired by the Holy Ghost that God didn't tell him to write down, he would clarify it and make sure that we understood that the things at that time that he was writing were not necessarily inspired by the Holy Ghost, but were something that he thought and were his thoughts. But he doesn't say that in this instance. And so we have to understand when he says, be thankful in all things, that he was inspired and moved on by the Holy Ghost to write those words down for you and I. And then that, if that wasn't even good enough, he writes these words at the end of that little statement or that little phrase. This is the will of God for you. It is the will of God for us to be thankful in everything that's happening in our lives. Now, we may not be thankful for everything, but we can be thankful in everything. So, not an option, as I mentioned. Not something you can you can be grateful and ungrateful as it suits you. Romans chapter 1, verse 21. I'm just going to just very briefly just talk about the, the downward trend of being unthankful. It says this in verse 21 of chapter 1 of Romans. Because that, when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful. But And then because they were not thankful... They became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Verse 22 says, professing themselves to be wise, uh, they became fools. The beginning of, of walking away from God, the beginning of being backslid, the beginning of leaving God and going into a, a life that is devoid of God being a part of your life, the beginning of it all is that when you know God, that you become unthankful for what God is doing in your life. It's also the beginning of a lot of other ills that are in our society today. As a pastor and uh, and by just so many things that I've read and, and books that I've read, uh, the beginning of marital problems, of relationships in marriages, because one or the other of the spouses or possibly both begin to get so critical with the, their spouse that it's a down downward spiral within that relationship. And as a pastor, when I've had the opportunity to be able to counsel with people uh, about the problems in their marriage, they have to begin with this very thing. They have to begin with looking at their spouse and finding things that they are thankful for about the one that God has placed in their lives. That can change it and begin to turn that and and get that back on the proper trend and back on the proper way of doing it. Likewise, in living for God. We can, we can begin to become negative about our lives and things that are going on in our lives, or we can turn it around and we can begin to be thankful for the things that God is doing and God has blessed us with, and it can change that direction of our lives. As I mentioned earlier, some people uh, in our world and uh, just become miserable and negative, complain about everything, and only complain continuously. They are a drain not only on those that are around them, but but I would say they're a drain on their families and a drain on themselves spiritually because um, because of the fact that they have refused and won't be thankful. To refuse to be thankful is to be disobedient to God. Let me let that sink in for a moment. To refuse to be thankful is to be disobedient to God. Because this is God's Word. And it's God's Word to change us. Last point in this is we cannot be a follower of Jesus Christ and be thankless. We can't be a follower. We can't. Our Christianity is, is worthless if we claim to be a Christian, but we cannot be thankful for the things that God is doing and God has done in our lives and God will continue to do in our lives. Because, of course, uh, the one that began a work in us will be faithful to complete it. So, not only does he advocate, Paul does, that we be thankful, but he adds these words in everything. Now, I don't know about you, but when I think about and I look at this and be thankful into everything, I want you to know that I need help. 
I just, uh, for myself, I can't do this in my own power. Because it's just way too easy for me to begin to look at the situations that are around me and the circumstances and sometimes people. Because, man, I'll tell you, sometimes people just don't do what they're supposed to do and and people will let you down and uh, disappoint you and and sometimes even so far as to to persecute you for the things that you believe. So and and circumstances may not may not be everything that you want them to be. But Paul was when he wrote these this letter, he says in everything. That means in every circumstance. You see, it seems impossible, but but can I tell you this about God? God deals in the impossible. If it was, if God only did the things in us that were possible for us to change ourselves, what need would we have of Him in our lives? But God deals with the impossible things in our lives. He's the one that makes up the difference where we have only been able to go so far in, in this area of our lives and God takes us with our faith in place. God takes us from there and takes us to the next level. He does that as a miracle in our lives. So you look in the New Testament and, and things that they would have thought would have been impossible. He took blind men and caused them to see. We'd look at that and say, that's impossible. But he did it. He took those that were deaf and, and he helped them to hear and, and their ears were open and they were able to hear. And those that were lame, he was, he, they got up and they walked and they were running and, and, uh, were able to integrate themselves back into their society, not as a beggar, but as someone who could contribute. He took lepers and cleansed them, took their leprosy and just completely removed it from their life. You see, the things that the world and that we think are impossible, in the hands of the one that had created all of this, they become his, his, what he does in trade. This is what he does in our lives, is the things that we consider to be impossible and the things that we see. It also says, so in everything. So God's the one that, that deals in the impossible in our lives. He's the one that's going to help you. When you can't find a way to be thankful, he's the one that's going to make up that difference. If you will allow him to, he will be able to take you to that place where the impossible has become possible in your life. Then it says in all circumstances, of course, in everything. So that means whether we're experiencing sorrow or gladness and joy. That means whether we are rich or whether we're poor. That means whether or not we have our health and we're strong or whether we have sickness or injury that affect our bodies. Whether we fail or whether we succeed. Whether we are existing or living in victory. Or whether we feel like life has just defeated us. It doesn't matter what our circumstances. Maybe when family and friends are kind and attentive. But also when they are unkind and maybe neglectful. In our lives. In everything. We are to be thankful. I want to stop there for just a moment. Because I do think that we need to. Let this sink into our lives. In all circumstances. Your circumstances shouldn't dictate to you. Your thankfulness to God. For what he's doing in your life. In fact is. Let me just add this. I think being thankful in adverse circumstances is probably, because I want you to know if, if I don't buy lottery tickets, but if I did and won the lottery, I could, I think I could just really be thankful at that time. Anybody else with me on that? I think, I think that at the, that period in time, man, I, I could, man, I could worship. I could praise. I could be thankful in moments like that. That, that 69, old 69 Mustang completely restored would be back in my garage in a moment. But what about when, when there's nothing? What about when there's little? Quite a few years ago, I, uh, uh, shortly after my wife and I arrived here in Port Alberni, uh, to start the church here in Port Alberni, uh, my lung collapsed and, uh, 
it did that three different times. They they stick a tube into your chest or into my chest between my ribs here to let the uh, excess air out and keep me in the hospital until the, the lung is well again. And then it collapsed a second time and then a third time. So the after the third time, I got shipped over to YVR and they actually did an operation on my lung. And uh, at times you, we we wonder, don't we? There's times we wonder, well, God, what what's what's the reason in all this? And Paul said, in all circumstances. In all circumstances. It doesn't matter uh, what's happening. So um, we've got to be able to accomplish this. If this is something that that is that is a command in our lives, we've got to be able to accomplish this if we are going to be successful in living for God. And displaying the power and the glory of God to those that are around us. So gratitude or thankfulness is, first of all, it is a child of your faith. So if you're not grateful, there's there's a gap in your faith. If you can be grateful when you're healthy, strong, and wealthy, but can't when the other side of it is true, there, there's a gap in your faith because you have not trusted God for the times that you have little. If we can truly do this, is it, uh, be grateful and everything, is an exhibition of our faith in the one who holds our lives in his hands and an exhibition of, of course, our Christianity, our true Christianity and living for God and our trust in God. Romans 8, 28 says this, all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. So we know that no matter what the circumstances are, that they're going to work out for good in our lives, providing that we love God and and all of us have been called, the ones that are, are in God's kingdom right now. You've been called, and those that are outside God's kingdom, I want you to know God's calling you right now to come into his kingdom. There's something that is moving in your heart, your life, your mind right now. God wants you. It is his will that all come to repentance. And so he's going to be calling you into his kingdom. So the only thing that remains for us is that we've got to continue to love God. And if we love him, we're going to trust him with our lives. He who began a good work in you, I quoted this earlier. Uh, He who began a good work in you will be faithful. He's going to be faithful to complete it. He's he's going to continue to work in your life. You say, what if I fail and fall down? Get back up again. Get get back to a place. Repent of your sin if you if you've sinned and and confess your sin to him. <clears throat> and he will be faithful to continue to work in your life. That the areas of your life that are are maybe failing or in the areas of your life that you are 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 not as strong in. God's going to help you to to be strengthened in those areas. We may not understand all that God is doing and the reasons for allowing these things to come into our lives. We may question it. He may not answer when we go to prayer and ask him, Father, why are you allowing this in my life? Why, Why is this happening in my life? We may not understand it until we finally get to see him face to face and get to ask him ourselves, why this? Why did you allow this to come to pass? Why did this happen in my life? But you want to know something? It's about trust. It's like it's like a piece of marble that is placed in the hands of a sculptor. The marble really doesn't doesn't have a choice about what the sculptor forms. It just is submissive to the chisel and the hammer and the changes that the sculptor makes. But what he makes could end up being beautiful. What he makes should end up being something of value. And, and so it is that, that in physical terms, we can understand that. But, but in spiritual terms, it means that we put ourselves on the potter's wheel, as the Bible talks about, and allow the potter to do the shaping and the forming and the making of who he desires and who he has seen us to be. And aren't you glad that you can trust him today? Amen. So, how do we get there? We, how do we go from, from point A to point B? How do we get from complaining to thankfulness? How do we, how do we get rid of that, that pervasive negative spirit and attitude that, that sometimes comes over us? How do we do that? First of all, 
uh, I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, five different points in this, how we can make sure that that we develop this uh, this attitude of, of being grateful. First of all, you have to realize that it is something that you have to do intentionally. This is going to take a conscious, intentional effort and discipline on our part. You need to develop it, to cultivate it. When uh, when you become unthankful, you need to wake yourself up. When you found yourself complaining to a friend or another member of the church or maybe your spouse or a loved one, and you found yourself going down that negative road that is is you know is is not God's intent for your life, you need to arrest that that direction. You need to change that direction. You need to do it intentionally. You need to stop there. You need to close your mouth and stop complaining about the things that are going on around you and discipline yourself to begin to look at the things that uh, God has blessed you. And we will look at that in just a moment. So the first step, develop it, cultivate it, discipline it, uh, conscious, intentional effort to be thankful for the things that God is doing in our lives. Second point, how we're going to get from A to B. Don't ignore the everyday blessings that God has in your life. There was a story one time out of, of an individual that, that had cancer and, uh, and got prayer and, uh, and so forth. And, and eventually they, they came out of it and, and the cancer was gone and, and it was uh, no longer a part of their lives anymore. And, and they had recovered fully. And of course they come and they're, and they're grateful and they're thankful and are able to testify about the goodness of God. But what about all of us that have remained healthy? What about all of us that still have our strength and our health? And, and as I mentioned, we can be probably be extremely thankful if God all of a sudden dumps a million dollars into our bank account and, and we get to use it. But what about all those times on the other side of it? What about when just living day to day and we find ourselves that so often that's what life's about is just from day to day? We need to be grateful even in those times. God is taking care of us. And uh, we live in a country, of course, where we have enough social programs and enough things happening right now that there's never a need on any one of us that we would be have to go without. And I know that there's plenty of people out there that are out there begging and out there asking for donations to, for you to be able to come and help them in their life. Honest to goodness, uh, Unless you're just, unless there's something wrong and there's some addiction that they're feeding, that the odds of an individual really needing something from you are there, honest to goodness need are rare, because most of them are are the way that they are in the situation they are because they have something that they are giving their money towards. So. Uh, we can be grateful. Everyday blessings of God. Um, I've gone hiking this last little while with a friend of mine and, and grateful for those. Usually every Thursday we'll go off and go hiking and, and seen some beautiful places. We've seen China Creek Falls and, and Weiner Falls and both the upper and the lower and, and see, just seen some beautiful country and, and just so thankful for, for everything that's around us. Just the everyday blessing. Thankful for the sunshine today or the rain when it comes that, that causes the area of our world to be so green and, uh, and so beautiful. Thankful for the mountains that, that we can see. And maybe the verse can come to mind every time we look off towards Mount Aerosmith and it's clear and we can see up to the top. I will look to the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord who made all of this, made heaven and earth. And uh, boy, if you've got him on your side helping you, there's nothing that is impossible to you. So don't ignore the everyday blessings of God. Begin to thank God for those everyday blessings. Thank God for each day. When you get up at the beginning of each day, begin to begin by thanking God for that day. For this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Number three. <coughs> Oops, sorry about that. Right into that microphone. <clears throat> Throw away pride, self-sufficiency, and conceit. You'll notice that in Paul's letters, did this thing still on? It is still on, isn't it? We're good? 
just sounded quieter for a second there. Uh, so <clears throat> you'll notice that in Paul's letters that in everything that he went through, he just seemed to find a way that he was going to glorify God. And uh, even though <clears throat> for one church he went through a list of reasons why he could have glorified in his flesh, he still stopped at the end of the time, end of his his talking about it, and he says, "I speak like a fool." Because in honesty, all of everything that I am and all that I have and, and all that God's allowed me to do and to be are from his hand. And so I give glory to God for every bit of it. Paul said, having obtained help of God, I continue unto this day. Another writing, he says, by the grace of God, I am who I am. So what have you got? What have you got as far as uh, uh, strengths or abilities in your life? Are you empathetic and compassionate towards others? that are around you. That's a gift of God. Do you have talents, whether it's musically or are you outgoing so that, that you will be able to witness freely without fear of what other people may think of you? Do you have a strength? Do you have finances? Do you have anything in your life right now? Those things are there as God's gifts in your life and not by your strength or your ability alone. And when we begin to realize it's not by my might nor by my strength, but by God's Spirit that these things are in my life, uh, that child of, of gratitude can begin to grow inside of all of us. <clears throat> Second, number four. Don't let the blessings of others make you despise your own. Sometimes we look around and we may see um, that God has done some miracle in somebody else's life. And uh, we may look at that and think, well, God, why not me? Why, why am I in this position? Whether it's financially, whether it's physically, whether it's health-wise. God, why am I this way? Why have you not given me all these things that somebody else has? And Paul's very clear in some of his writing. It's really a mistake when we start comparing ourselves amongst each other. It's a mistake whenever I look at somebody else. Because you see, if somebody has a greater amount, can I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I know as a pastor that, and especially I mentioned this to, to the fellow I go hiking with. I said, you should have known me when I was 35. I had all the answers then. Now I'm 68 and I realize how much I don't know. But but honestly, there was times as a pastor, I would look at how God was blessing other churches and, and giving them revival, and, and it seemed like we were just holding our own, that, that it caused me to look at what I had and, and not think that it was what God should have done in my life. But I somehow God awakened me during that time, and it got my attention, and it changed the way that I thought about the living for God. It changed my own attitude and my own spirit so that when I came to church, I wasn't looking around to see how few or how many or who was there, or whether it was comparative to somebody else. But I was coming in and just thanking God for all of those that God had placed in my life and the ability to be able to minister and to serve God. It changed my life because I wasn't looking at what other people had. I was just looking at, at God and what he had done in my life. The last one. I'm amazed at, at uh, how many churches can talk about praise or worship and have their praise service or their worship services. But you go in and you sit in the churches and they're quiet. No, no expression of that praise or that thanksgiving or that worship is raised in it. It is a brief moment for a little while of singing and then the minister will get up and preach a message and, and, uh, and, usually for a set amount of time and, and then it will end and everybody will go home. But number five in all of this is you have got to give expression to your praise and thanksgiving. Somewhere it's got to make its way from outside of your mind and your heart and begin to come out and you've got to give, give voice to what God has done in your life. Begin by thanking God for every little thing that comes into your life. Do it verbally. Do it out loud. Thank God for it. Do it when you're talking to others. Just tell them, I thank God for what he's done in my life. Begin to express your praise and your thanksgiving. The more you express it, the more grateful you will become. The more you give voice to it, the more it's going to be real in your life. 
you say you mean speak it and, and get it or whatever. No, honestly, that's not what this is about. This is about knowing that, that what happens in your life, what you are able to put out is going to be reciprocal and it's going to come back to you in greater measure. Amen. Give and it shall be given you. God's going to pour back into, if you're thankful for the little things, God's going to, God's going to show you so many other areas of your life that you have to be thankful for. The more you express it, the more grateful you will become. In closing, I just want to mention one passage of scripture or one instance in Jesus' life. Uh, there were uh, a number of lepers that uh, heard that Jesus was coming. The Bible gives their number as being ten. And uh, they had heard that, that Jesus was able and that he had healed lepers and that he was healing the sick. And, and so many miracles were being done during the ministry of Jesus Christ. And so they had heard about this. And uh, so from a long ways away, they began to call when they knew that Jesus was close. And, and from, from a distance, they began to call out to him to heal them so that they might return. Understanding the plight of lepers during that time, that time period, and that's the society back then. They were, they were ostracized. They were, they were not allowed to interact with family or with, uh, with society. They had to, uh, cover their faces and their lips. And if anybody got close to them, they would have to utter the words, unclean, unclean. Can you imagine what it would be like to have leprosy in that time, in that society during during Jesus' day. And so they wanted to be healed. They, they wanted their leprosy to be gone so they could go back and interact with families, become members of society, go back and do their jobs again. And, uh, and so they called out to Jesus to heal them. Jesus told them and, and called out to them, he says, go show yourselves to the priest, which was the first step that they would have to do when if the leprosy had left their bodies to show themselves to the priest, the priest would declare them clean. They could have then return as a member of society. Uh, and so they're on their way to the, to the temple to show themselves to the priest. On their way, the, the leprosy began to leave their bodies. I don't know how extensive it was in all of them. I don't imagine, I can't imagine what kind of damage had been done to their bodies and that uh, during this time, some may have been minor, some more, more, uh, more prevalent and, and more, uh, uh, noticeable in their bodies. But as they're way on their way to the temple, all of a sudden they noticed that there was a healing that had taken place. Maybe one leper looked at another and said, Hey, those spots on your face are gone. And he looked back and said, Hey, look at you. Look what's happening. All those those things that have so uh, changed your looks, it's all coming back, and and you're looking looking normal again. You're looking the way that you should, and uh, and so uh, they're just ecstatic with the fact that that they are now going to be able to change. Their lives are going to be changed from this moment on. But nine continued onward, but one turned around. One came back to Jesus and began to thank him and to glorify him and worship him for the change and the healing that had taken place in his life. And Jesus said to him, you can go your way. You have been made whole. There's a wholeness that comes into our lives. Uh, just I look at people's lives and, and uh, see them so broken. And uh, so messed up because of something that's happened uh, to them. Maybe something that's happened to a loved one. Uh, maybe it's just been the the constant barrage of of things that have happened that have gone on in the world and gone on in their lives. And, and oftentimes, people's lives are so broken and and they're just not whole. There's just too many things that are a mess. They can be healed. Maybe their finances can be solved, but. But inside, there's still something that's missing, something that's not right. And Jesus said to this one that came back and was thankful and grateful for what had happened to him. He says, you can go your way. You have been made whole. I want for wholeness to be in each one of our lives. I think for wholeness to, <clears throat> for us to be complete, that is the proper balance 
this this physical, this body is always going to be a part of my life until until Jesus takes me home. And then he's going to change it. And it's going to be different. But at least in its present form and the way that it is right now, it's always going to be something that I have to deal with. This mind and all of its ways of thinking, my spirit and sometimes the way that I act and react, all those things are, are so much a part of my life. But then when God came in, and the Holy Ghost filled me. Something changed. Now, there's kind of a knee-jerk reaction on our part. We get, we get just way over the, the one side, so spiritual that, and I wish we could stay there, but, but because of the physical and because of the thought, sometimes there, we come back to kind of a, a median. We come back to, to a place that is, is maybe not as, excited not as not as relevant to this world as being a spiritual child of god uh, as we need to be and and we come back to that what we think is spiritually normal but i want you to know today that god wants to make us whole he wants to take all of the the wounds all of the brokenness all of the 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 fact that the physical is so prevalent that it's out of balance with the spiritual and he wants to make us whole again. And I believe that one of the, the main ingredients, one of the most important things about, about what God wants to do in our lives, that we can help him to be able to accomplish this, is by being thankful. By showing gratitude for the things that he has done in our lives. And training that thankfulness to be continuous. And in every and all circumstances that may arise in our lives. Can you join with me together? Let's just close our eyes for a few moments. Father, I'm so thankful for what you have done in my life. I'm so grateful. I just go through a list of the what you have done, of what the Holy Ghost has accomplished in my life. Father, I'm just, uh, I don't know, as I mentioned earlier, where I would be without you. But I'm grateful. I'm grateful. Father, that you have brought me out of that. I'm grateful for where you have brought me to. And Father, I know that your work in me is not finished. I know that I have got so far to go. And Lord, that I find myself falling so short of all that you want and desire me to be. But Lord, I know and I'm grateful today that you're going to keep on working in my life. Maybe even through some of the circumstances that, that I have such a hard time being grateful for. Through those circumstances, Father, you're going to develop that fruit of the Spirit in my life. Those, those qualities that need to be in me as a child of God. Father, I just pray for each and every one within the sound of my voice right now. Lord, that you will work in each life. Father, that you will just help each and every one of us to begin to to vocalize, begin to train this child of gratefulness within us, to not allow, Lord, that uh, that complaining, cynical spirit to grab a hold of us and drag us away from that, that place of gratefulness that, that we need to have in our lives. Father, I pray that it won't be just something that's in our hearts and minds, but, but Lord, that it'll be in our relationship with others that we'll express our gratitude for what God has done and the blessings that you have placed in our lives. Father, I just pray for each and every one of your children today. Lord, just help them to develop this gratefulness and this thankfulness in their lives. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much for all of you that have joined together with us for this service. Um, don't forget, for those of you in Port Alberni, we will be meeting at the church tomorrow at 6 o'clock for prayer. And I pray that you will, uh, if you, uh, oh, I was going to mention this earlier. If you are still uncomfortable, if you're sick or, or feel like there's um, there's a problem in you yet that, uh, that you don't want to uh, be here, that's just fine. There's not going to be any judgment if you should choose not to. But for those of you that would like to, we're going to join ourselves together in prayer tomorrow night here at the church at 6 o'clock. God bless you all. Amen.